Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on Super Shrimp Channel. Now it has been a little while since I've done a midweek video and there is explanations as to why um, I've been behind uh, and it's simply for the fact is that I'm trying to get ahead of myself in terms of content uh, of the podcast, the Super Sunday podcast which you guys are loving by the way so thank you very much for that. Um, so this week's video is a video that I've been wanting to do for a while and it's taken a lot of planning, a lot of prep, going back through social medias, finding Facebook, photos, Instagram, uh, uploads, etc. And um, yeah, so this week's video has taken a lot of prep and research. And so I hope you guys enjoy it. So getting all the research out of the way and all the prep, um, this week's video is indeed, as you'll be able to tell by the title, a sum up of my whole three universities that I've been uh, that I've been here for three years at the University of Lincoln. It's mad. I like. I remember day one like it was yesterday. Your uni experience will go so quick. In three years, I have learnt and discovered so much, not just about myself, but about how you set yourself up to live in the big wide world on your own. Starting by living on your own, finding houses, budgeting, shopping, making friends, doing work, like, it's just a mad comprehension of what is entailed by leaving home. And that's what my first point is, that leaving home is not easy by any means necessary. If you're going to university and you're watching this video, let me tell you now, leaving home is not easy because there's kind of three big changes that you have to make. A, you have to get used to doing your own washing, your own cooking, your own cleaning, your own budgeting, your own shopping. You have to be your own alarm clock, like, you have to do so much and when I mean I am not a spoiled kid by any means necessary but you appreciate so much more what your parents do for you when you're living away from home than when you're actually at home and to make that change so quick and so sudden it is a shock to the system like it is a huge shock to the system and Yes, I had friends to help me through it. Um, when I first came to uni, I was in a relationship. And there was, you know, there was definitely elements that had a heavier impact than others. But overall, moving into student accommodation and away from home, there's no feeling for it apart from apprehensive vulnerability and you have to learn quick. Now the accommodation I moved into when I left home, so where I'm back from in Loughborough, when I moved to Lincoln, the accommodation, student accommodation I moved into was courts. Now anyone who knows Lincoln courts will know the, the, what the accommodation is like. You know, if you watch this video, leave down in the comments what you think courts was like. Because I, I miss courts to a, to a degree. Yes, it was like a prison cell with fabricated like bricks of like, I don't know. They're like, yeah, maybe six to eight inches like prefabricated bricks and it was bare or like open featured bricks as well so you could see it. Um, single bed. The toilet and the shower, like it, it had an ensuite, but it's more of a cubicle. Like the way my room was uh, laid out, and I'll try and give you guys the best like description so you guys can visualize what I mean. So you've got a flat, and think of it like a big N. So it goes up one side, down another side, and, and down at the end. So from the last bedroom to the door. So you let yourself in the door, you've got the kitchen on the left, and you turn right and you've got a big corridor with 
between my court had six flats per floor, I think, but other courts I know had more about 14 or so. So this corridor varied in size uh, and I was uh, flat six, it was a flat five, five or six, I was at the end anyway. Um, so you go down the corridor, you turn right into my bedroom, uh, you open the door, and say if I'm standing in the bedroom now, I'm facing my bed. It's a single bed, so it's like it's like a P. If I'm if I'm to shape the P, that's what the room's like. So the corridor, the bed, you've got a square here, and then the toilet ensuite was was on, on the corner. So the room was actually angled, and the ensuite was was like a a bigger a better. Portaloo is the only way I can describe it. It wasn't pleasant, but it did the job. The showers were either really hot and just dagging into your back, or it wasn't great and it was just trickles and it was really hard to get a shower. And there's just an element of it, of a wholesome student feel that makes me miss courts. Everyone was in the community from like court one to so court 18, I think. Uh, everyone had a community, you all used the same washing facilities. You know, there was only one road up to the uni, you'd all pass each other's courts. You might be able to go look through other people's like bedrooms if they hold a prize, or you know, you might be able to, to see what other people live in. It was very homely and wholesome. And especially if you had friends like I did, I had a lot of friends that stayed in courts and there was just an element of it that every student will miss student accommodation one way or another. And that's part of learning to deal with that move away from home. You make that new place your home instantly. That feels like your safe haven. That is your attachment. If I can, in fact, I'm just thinking, if I can, I'll drag it a Google image and I will clip it for you guys. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to see then what court actually was like. And I've got a lot of good memories in courts. Um, my flatmates were amazing. Uh, three girls and two lads. Um, now, one of the lads, so it was just me in the end, ended up leaving halfway through uh, the first year. So it's just me and a flat of girls. Um, and then there's a story to, to come all with this later so I won't go into too much detail but it was just me and a few girls um, living in this court for our first year and it was nice you know we would cook together we would order takeaways we would play games we would prees we would go out and that's what first year of a student is like. So sticking with first year, um, as I've already stated, I came to uni in a relationship. Freshers week, I broke up with, with said person, I'm not gonna reveal names because I don't have their, their uh, permission. I don't know what this was, ignore this. I, I just don't have their permission to, to say names. So I broke up with, uh, my first girlfriend in Freshers Week. There's a tip, usually nine times out of 10 from what I've seen, from what I know, from what I've been through, from what I've seen other people go through. Relationships do not work, especially if you're a first year. At uni, nine times out of 10 if you're a first year, relationships won't work. Um, and that's a bitter experience, you know, Breakups are never nice anyway, let alone if you're at uni, um, you know. And that led me on to Freshers Week where I went out six nights out of seven first year. I think I went out six nights out of seven in first year. Um, Freshers Week is a once in a lifetime opportunity because freshers in second and third year are different compared to what it is in first year. It's a heavy toll on your body because you, 
let's say from Monday to Friday, there's a, there'll be an event every night. So my first event was a phone party on the day that I arrived. So I unpacked, so I got up at five, we drove to Lincoln, unpacked my house, parents left, had maybe three or four hours to myself, got ready, went out to this phone party, sick night out, although, tip, if you've got tattoos, be careful in phone parties because some phones can react bad. Uh, badly to the ink or your skin will react badly with, with the mix of the ink and the chlorine and things that is used within the foam so just be careful of that um, so you go to this foam party probably to about three four you'd come on you'd go to another bar to about five scene which i'll get onto later because scene is a big part of anybody's uh, uni experience if you're at the uni of lincoln um, like, wherever you go, you'll always have that bar that stays open till five. Definitely, 100%. Um, so you'd go to this bar till five, you'd go to Mackey's, you'd get in at about six, half six, um, and then you'd go to sleep till about one, two-ish. You'd eat, you'd have three or four hours, you'd get ready, and you go out again. And it's that same routine every night for um, every night for a week. Although if you're at Lincoln, and I'm not sure how many, many universities do this now, but you will actually end up having a, a two week fresher, a fortnightly fresher. Like you'll end up having two weeks of fresher. Um, which I didn't have in my first year. I think they brought that in in second year for me. Um, and so the night I didn't go out was the day after the phone party because I was just so tired from moving. You know, I've moved house, I've been out. I hadn't eaten properly, I hadn't slept properly, so I didn't go out the second night. But then the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I went out ready for, I didn't go out on Sunday, ready for Monday for my first ever lecture. So Freshers Week is insane and you want to save for Freshers Week because you will spend about maybe four to five hundred pounds in Freshers Week alone because you say, let's break it down. So you go to a club, uh, five, six pound entry per ticket, then you're having three or four drinks in a club, maybe double vodka cokes, VKs, and VK deals are like two for four pound. So you got maybe three lots of them, which is 12 pound. So there's 20 pound gone already. Minus if you go anywhere else, if you've gone for food. And some nights you will spend more than others because you'll always have that night where you go in with your card and you get absolutely more to the point where you can't stand. Because that's an experience. And every student will have a story where they've been paralytic, blackout drunk. It, it's it's the, the truth at the end of the day. And any parents that are scared what their kid's going to go to at uni, or any parents that don't let their kid go to uni because they don't want them to get drunk, they don't want them to do drugs, they don't want them to... You're, you have every right to be afraid but if you trust your kid to be sensible and you let them have that free reign of growing up, becoming an adult, being, being an adult properly learning with experiences and life lessons, then you as a kid, as a student, will respect that so much more and you will know that from the off of Freshers Week. Once you've had that blackout drunk period, You'll be, you'll learn, you'll know your limit, you'll know your maximum, you'll know your, how far you can push yourself. You'll know, I can drink this stuff, but I can't drink this, and you'll have that alcohol that instantly makes you sick. But you learn it. You then learn how to deal with hangovers, how to go on with lectures, how to move forward. And Freshers Week teaches you a lot, mainly with budgeting, actually. Budgeting eating, adapting, and it is part of that adaption, you know,
because then every for me in first year every Wednesday Friday Saturday I'd end up going out in the end so we'd have a student union night out on a Wednesday Friday would be uh, a nightclub called Super Bowl and then Saturday will be um, when I was here it was another student union propaganda uh, in first year which was actually really fucking good to be fair it was so good and there would be my nights out and some nights I'd go heavier than others some nights I wouldn't drink as much some nights I wouldn't drink at all I'd get alcohol free beer for pre's I would then go out and get a lemonade a coke and if anyone's like you know what you got there you can just say vodka and coke vodka lemonade like you don't have to drink and go out there are ways around it and people should respect you for that and people will if you're budgeting or so many times my mates have gone oh i'll come out tonight but i'm not drinking that's fair enough but you're making that social effort so as i said this brings me on to my next point social effort making friends joining a society whether it's academic or sport I highly recommend this so I've been part of drama society for two years now um, and it's one of the best things I've done I've met some incredible people I've met my best friend Curtis he's you know we've been to Thailand together I've met you know I can list as long as my arm you know I've met so many incredible people with so many experiences and stories themselves that you appreciate them and you, you connect over so many different things like gaming, music, clothing, hobbies, interests, foods, drinks, you know, so many nights out where you find that someone's got the same uh, interest as you do. So I know, for example, for me, every Sunday at uni is Super Sunday. This is where I got the name for the podcast from. But we have a Super Sunday every Sunday where we, me, Curtis, Aidan and Toby, who you guys have met on the first week's podcast, we go to Tower Bar and we do football and beers. And at first it was me and Curtis just doing that it'd be start at 12 finish at 6 three games of football 9 between 6 and 9 pints maybe and then we were on a night out on a drama society night out and we met Aiden. he was interested we invited him he came and now he's, he's you know he's part of the Super Sunday group and you, you just bond over so much so many things that you'd be surprised and like there is no exclusion from any group you know there'll be someone interested even if it's the most minor thing of, or the most obscure interest if I know collecting pebbles or or rocks someone at here at uni will will also be interested in that and it's just about networking and branching yourself out and finding them people because you will always have friends that introduce you to other people that introduce you to their their flatmates mates or your flatmates mates partner you know there'll be so many different groups of people that you will meet and so many times I've been on nights out with people I don't know the name of until halfway through. And it's like, so how do you know so-and-so? And it's like, well, I know, I know them through their, I'm their housemates, boyfriends, flatmates. And it's like, all oh, right, okay, cool. And then you, you, you bond with them for maybe four or five hours overnight. And then you look back at the photos and be like, yeah, I've had a sick night. It was a good night last night. Or well, yeah, I'm going to the study group with with so and so. We're going to the library. We're doing work. We're going out for food, and it's just little things when you keep yourself busy that keep you going through uni. So definitely join a society.
And for me, it was drama. Now, let's get on to the bulk of uni, which is the course that you do. So for me, I do drama, shock, you know, want to be a drama teacher, this is why I'm doing it. I like drama to the point where I want to take it further and I want to inspire others to like drama. Aspire to inspire, that's what I always say. Um, now, the course, first year, there's two ways you can go about doing a course in first year. You either A, can make sure you pass, which you have to do to get on second year, in the sense that you just do the bare minimum to pass and you're more worried about having a social life. Or B, you can work hard and play hard. Now, for me, I was a mixture between the two because I was going out a lot. But I was still making sure I passed the work to go on to second year. My course is where I've met most of my friends, whether they're in drama society with me or on my drama course. Most of my friends and ex-partners and uh, new housemates for next year, I have met on the course. Because you work and spend so much time together and you get to know each other because you're rehearsing maybe for me three or four times a week per module, depending on what you do. And so you start to learn even the little things of what people eat and how you and how they work and what they wear and what they listen to and what their interests are. And having a good course and having a good cohort of, of mates and individuals is so important because without the people I'd met, I wouldn't have had a house for second year. And without them, I wouldn't have had the life lessons I have today. And I wouldn't have the experiences or the stories to tell you guys or to show for it when I leave. And as I say, I will keep filtering in and out photos of a nice house, like accommodations, houses, events, uni work, etc. I'll just filter them in and out. But so many nights out, and it just leads to topping off your experience. Now, don't be fooled by work hard, play hard. Because at times your uni work and your course will drag you down to the point if you're at rock bottom, you're scraping, your, you're at the epitome of downfall because you're, you've got so much work to do. But prioritise. And that is one thing I've been good at, prioritising dates. Prioritising what's got to be handed in where. When's this got to be handed in by? What have I got to do for this assessment? Who have I got to work with to get this done? Who have I got? And I, I've always had them plans in motion to be like, I know I will get this done. I know that I will have this piece of work written by the 28th of April. And it's having that dedication and that motivation to drive forward, to keep going. And even when you've reached rock bottom and it's starting to take a toll on how much you sleep, how much you eat, how much you drink, how you act in social, uh, in social situations, keep going. And so many times people have gone, I've been this close to dropping out. Every student will hit that point of, I want to go home. I don't like it. I want to drop out. Persevere because there'll be something that keeps you going through it. And it goes like that. The flick of a switch, you're at the end of your experience. And it is it's not heartbreaking, but it is a sad moment to finish your uni degree, to move on, to take a new step, a new chapter. But you will do it. And you'll know if uni is not for you because it won't appeal from the first from the first step. 
and that's why many people don't don't go to uni. It's not for them, the debt, the you know, the coursework. What what uni asks of you is insane. But you will learn so much and you'll be so happy for it because his the best three years I could have ever asked for. Without a shadow of a doubt. And I've met some amazing people. I've met some incredible people. Don't get me wrong, I've also met some awful people. But what outweighs the most is how happy you'll be at the end of it. The outcome of where you see yourself like, now I've got my degree, I can see myself as a drama teacher. And that's where I want to be. You know, I'm happy in a relationship with someone who I met in a society. And I couldn't imagine life without them now. And I couldn't imagine how I would cope if I didn't, if I wasn't this busybody, if I wasn't always a social bee, if I wasn't always a, if I wasn't always being me and being happy and, and keep trying to push myself and improve myself the best I can be. And that's all I'll say to you guys is be yourself, be you, keep pushing yourself, working hard, efficiently the best way and you'll learn the best way that you can work for me it's kinesthetically hands on doing something learning physically manually putting plans into motion getting up and doing something rather than sat bogged down in emotion and notes but for you guys it might be different and I feel like I want to be honest with you guys on my experience as well as everyone else's. Now, I'm gonna move on to second and third year now, but we're gonna take a quick break because I need a drink, so I'll be back in a second. Right, drink has been had, and now we've covered first year in a lot of depth, I'm going to talk about second year. Now, second year freshers from the beginning, I'll start from the beginning. Second year freshers, I ran out every night because I learned from first year that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go out every night and make the most of it. I went to paint parties, I went to phone parties, I went to themed parties and I went to a lot of um, auditions or taster sessions for other societies and the second year is where I joined Drama Society. I've already mentioned it a lot but Drama Society has helped me massively with making friends. My girlfriend that I'm with now, I met her at Drama Society. I've directed, I've, I've uh, played roles, I've been an ensemble. And it is the best thing I've done since I've been here. Putting yourself out there in second year, I wish I'd have done it sooner. However, I didn't feel in first year I could take it on, but in second year I knew it was something that I wanted to do. So back to reiterate the point, do join a society. I can't stress enough how important it is. Join a society or an activity of some sort, whether it be academic or sport. It will be so integral to your experience of three years. I promise you that. Now, following on from second year, accommodation changes. This is the first year where you've got to find housemates and look for a house together. Um, and I and the two lads I lived with, Tom and Sam, did that very efficiently. We found landlords, they weren't the greatest landlord, and I'll get onto a landlord in an accommodation in a minute. But we found a house, it was about a 10 minute walk away from uni, wasn't far, you pay deposit, you pay your rent, all is fine. Like you move in and that is your first real taste of a proper home that you've had since leaving home. Because you then realise that the student accommodation first year is nothing compared to this 
house that you've got in second year. Now for me, I had quite a nice room. I had a downstairs room and a fireplace, it was a very big room. Bed, heater, table, wardrobe, drawers, my TV, my PlayStation, and you, it's your first experience of living with two other people that you've never lived with before, and you find out dirty habits, you find out how you adapt to living with other people. Like, I know for my housemate Sam, it wasn't his thing, so now he lives on his own in a, in a flat on a, um, about two minutes away from uni. Now that sets you up for essentially third year because you've had the experience of moving once. Now let's go on to landlords and estate agents. There will be some landlords out there that are dicks. There will be some landlords out there that are lovely. There will be some estate agents that will be of superior service to you and will do everything you ask of them. And then there'll be some agents out there that do bugger all and you've got to do it yourself. But that's a learning curve. And now I'm not throwing names under the bus, I'm not trying to get demonetized, but what I will say is that be careful who you go with and make sure you view the house. Make sure that you go with everyone that's going to live there and look at the house and talk to the estate agents and get every question and contract out of the way to get a proper understanding of what that house is going to be like when you move in. And in third year, that's probably been my worst issues the housing. And hence, that's why I spend most of my time here at my girlfriend's place. But you learn. And in second year, I was a, spent a lot of time at my house because I liked it there. And it was nice, but you, you have to move out or you extend the contract. And that's just decisions you have to make as being an adult. And you have to take that step of growing up. You have to take that step of owning up to every action, to every action that you make because each one will have its consequence if you're learning from it and each one will have its benefit if you're experiencing good things from taking that step forward. Because bear in mind as well as balancing houses, you're still balancing your course and in second and third year your course gets an awful lot harder. You know, it demands a lot more that you need let's go of your hand in the metaphor sense of we're now not going to guide you as, as much as we did in first year. We're going to let you take the steps yourself. And so in second year, it's kind of like that settling year of, right, I've now got to set myself up for third year, which is the big year. You've got your dissertation, your finals, uh, like final exams, depending on what course you do. For me, it was a final performance. Um, and if you want to actually know more about my course, then tune in for this Sunday's podcast with Ellie because we talk from the whole uni experience from a podcast side um, of questions and answers pretty much. And what studying a drama degree is actually like um, and what it's like now in these affected times, especially more so. Um, so yeah, if you want to find out more information actually about studying a drama course, then check the podcast out. Um, but if you're here as a general experience, second and third year will be a lot harder. Anyone you ask will say, oh, it's 10 times harder. But that makes an experience. You will have elements of uh, assessments that aren't as good as some grades that you could get and some are better than what you expect. And getting grades again is part of an experience of Results day is 17th at four o'clock. Right. And then your brain thinks, and that's like a, an achievement for you once they come out, and whether you get a 2-2, two, two, a 2-1, a first, a third, you fail, whatever result it may be, you learn from it, and you try, and you experience. You experience criticism, 
because nothing will be perfect and you experience a lot of things about how you write, how you act under pressure of deadlines. So much comes from being a student of writing assessments or performing assessments or taking exams or studying really hard and not doing as well as you could have done or studying really hard and doing better than what you thought. And so much comes from that, whether that be a sense of achievement but never once think you failed. Never. There are modules that I've gotten 38 on and not passed. There are modules that I've gotten 82 on and smashed. Yeah, I'm in third year. I've graduated. I'm going on to teach and become a teacher. I can't. I'm so grateful for the experience, like, I'm so grateful for everyone's help of helping me write better, helping me learn, helping me be a, a better student, be a better, what we say in the drama world is, is a dramaturg, like being a better creator, performer, actor. You know, if you're doing an English course, being a better writer, if you're doing a, an art course, being a better designer, whatever it may be, whatever you're going to go on and study, whether it be law, drama, English, sport, languages, history, business, there are a hundred thousand degrees out there that specialise in so many different things. But once you found that balance of working hard and playing hard, and the criticism and failure and achievement, and you get that clear difference of one and the other, everything will make that experience 10 times sweeter by knowing that you've learned something from it and that you can move forward and, and hopefully do better than what you did before. Or learning that this is the way to go now. And it starts just in second year, you slowly start shaping up a different path by choosing your modules and you slowly just start going off on your own into the big world without even knowing. And that is one of the great things of second year, with it being a settling year in the middle. You just start slowly, you're on a path and you slowly just start going off on your own, doing your own thing and figuring out slowly what you want to do. All because the learning and uh, the life lessons and the learning experiences of being a student. Now, obviously, I don't want to repeat myself too much, but I've done first and second year, and I've got to go on to doing third year. And the biggest difference of third year compared to the other two is this year sets you up for that next step properly. So for me, it's about applying for a PGCE. For others, it will be about applying for masters and setting yourself that goal of. Right, for me, I know Manchester want a 2-2 or above, so that's what I've got to get to go there to teach. Some people are like, right, I know Bournemouth have got to need me to get a 2-1, or uh, Edinburgh, or, you know, wherever you're going up and down the country, this is where you set yourself a goal of, this is where I need to be in the future. And this is the year where you stop going out as much, unless I was part of Drama Society, I don't think I would have gone out at all in third year. Maybe apart from my birthday and a couple of other birthdays. Maybe three or four nights out I would have gone on. And if it wasn't for drama society and being in shows or directing a show or being part of a team that, that dedicates and you have to you have to dedicate time and commitment to. I don't think I would have gone out at all. Maybe now I've, I've finally found that balance with working hard and playing hard and knowing that I can happily sit here and say that I will graduate with a 2-1. It's not a first, but I know I've done my best and I'm happy of the experience I've got. And that's why I want to conclude the video. Because there isn't a lot of difference in third year. Other than the fact your workload increases You've learned how to budget from first year. 
you've learned the difference between working hard and playing hard. You, you're still finding houses and you're still taking that next step forward. You know, each year from first, second and third, they will sew each other together to help you come out the other side as a completed student package of being a graduate. That's what it is. And I know I didn't get it first, but I know I didn't get it too, too. And that is the main thing. That concluding as a graduate, if you are happy with the outcome grade and you are happy with the experience and the life lessons that you have learned and you feel prepared, then you've done the uni experience right. Now there is a wrong way to do it, of course. You can get kicked out of uni, you can get kicked off your course, you can fail in a year so you have to retake. And there'll be elements that you can't control throughout these three years. For me, I've had family members pass away, I've had arguments, I've had fights, I've had nights out that haven't concluded the way I think they would. I've had, you know, meetings that haven't gone the way I, I envisioned and you have to adapt. And now I don't think that, unless you get got kicked out or you've broken the law, there is not really a wrong way to do uni. Each student will have their own experience. And it's incredible. And the stories you hear from each individual, and I don't want to repeat myself, but you will learn that my experience, next to Curtis's experience, next to Heather's experience, next to Ellie's experience, you know, all these people that have been on my channel, or are going to be on my channel, each experience is different. But I guarantee you, every one of them will be happy with the, from what they've learned and what they've gained and what, who they are after the outcome. And if you go on to do a PGC, and if you go on to do a Masters, I wish you the best of luck. And if you've done one, Leave it down in the comment section what it's like to do one because this is the next step that I'm going on. And that's where you guys come into it because I will take you on that journey. I will take you with me. You're coming to Manchester. You will see what it's like to be a teacher training. Hopefully, if I can record. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Like, I wish everyone the best of luck in any step. Whether we've had a negative run in in life or we, we're positive and we're still friends and I wish everyone the best of luck. Their next steps in life, whether you're a uni student or not, be grateful, stay safe, be happy and set yourself a goal and dedicate yourself, drive towards it. And even if you reach rock bottom, mentally, physically, emotionally, you'll get out of it. And I know people that have had have struggled, but they've got on there. I know myself, if you set yourself up properly, then I have faith in every single one of you. Don't forget that this video is sponsored by Rogue Energy. Use code SHRIMP88 at checkout. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you all in a bit.